My name is Craig Sherba. I'm the president and CEO of Energizer Resources. Energizer Resources has a graphite project in Madagascar. Uh, it's a unique deposit in the fact that it's very, very high quality uh, deposit and very, very large. And we have a very quick path to production for the company. Uh, we have been doing exploration work in Madagascar since 2007. Uh, we discovered the graphite project itself in 2011, uh, developed that up to a bankable feasibility study, and we've been looking at value engineering portions to basically bring down the capital cost, the operating cost, to get speed to market uh, for our product in Madagascar. So we initiated what's called a feed study, a front-end engineering and design study about three months ago. Uh, we just concluded with the results of that, uh, uh, that study. Uh, the study has concluded that we have a very, very low capital cost in relation to just about every other project out there right now, uh, and it's a, a, a project that we can get into production within nine months period of time. Uh, Madagascar's unique geological environment, it's uh, made uh, very, very high quality graphite, uh, volumetrically significant as well. Graphite in Madagascar has been mined for over a century, uh, so it's a very well-renowned uh, quantity in Madagascar. Uh, it's never been mined at very large quantities, however, uh, so usually projects have been mining between 2,000 and 5,000 tons per year of uh, flake graphite, which has been renowned to be the highest quality in the world. What we would propose to do in Madagascar is actually get a mine into production uh, that would be volumetrically significant. Uh, so one of the uh, we're leaders so far as size is concerned we have a very high quality product as well so it's good for all demand markets our nearest term catalyst is the I guess the beginning of our uh, design development engineering for the actual mine itself uh, so that'll probably take us about a month to do that and then it's procurement of equipment to be milling a mine in Madagascar the phased approach we're doing this to basically to drop down the capital costs. Uh, one of the things we did is we re-examined how you actually construct a mine. Uh, we originally had up to 1,500 people on site for a period of 18 months to construct our mine as envisioned during our feasibility study. What we're looking at now with the feed study results is we're looking to basically drop that down so we're looking at a contingent of 30, 40 people putting on pre-built modules uh, within Madagascar. It drastically reduces our build time, drastically reduces our capital costs uh, while keeping our operating costs very, very low. So this is really a game changer for the company. Absolutely. Well, there's actually two questions that you had asked there. So the first one so far is the value-added portion is concerned. Uh, we are investing in the value-added portions in the back of the plant. Because we have a modular construction philosophy, we can actually add modules on the back of the plant for spherinization, we can look at uh, doing purification on-site or off-site, uh, the expanded graphite market as well. We're looking at all of these various things in a modular fashion, basically in a stepwise phased approach to keep with our whole concept of doing a phased kind of development approach. Uh, so far as the costing is concerned, there's two major things that you have to look at for any project. It doesn't even have to be for graphite, and that is the capital cost and the operating cost. Uh, the capital cost for our bank will feasibility was $188 million US which is substantive, but it's on par with all the other large graphite projects out there. Uh, that philosophy, it's a little bit difficult to get $188 million in the marketplace as it current stands right now. So we changed our whole development philosophy to get a toehold into the marketplace. So the feed study, really, it's a modular approach uh, to build a, or construct a, a plant, a demonstration plant that's capable of 15,000 tons per annum, which, by the way, would probably be the third largest graphite mine outside of China. Uh, so it is a substantive volume uh, that we would be producing on that, but it's a very low capital cost in relation to the feasibility study. For the feed study for this 15,000 ton capable plant, we'd be looking at probably $10 million US. In addition to that, we optimized through a value engineering process over the last year to get the operating costs down low as well, because uh, that's usually one of the triggers as well, and that's why I think a lot of people come up with very, very large graphic deposits. It's because you get economies of scale. A very large deposit will drive down your operating costs so you're competitive with the Chinese, for example. Uh, what we've done actually is we've focused on the small scale plant to get an operating cost down the low that is still competitive with the Chinese producers there. Uh, one of the things that we had done early on with our bankable feasibility study, and this was really the direction of all the technical people we had involved with the project, uh, was that it would be misleading if we just had an X plant cost or a cost to produce graphite at the back of our plant. Uh, most people, they give what the operating cost is at the back of the plant. 
uh, but they don't take into the shipping. And the shipping and logistics for an industrial mineral is one of the most critical aspects as far as the pricing is concerned. So all of our pricing has included uh, the FOB costing or the CIF costing actually. So this is delivered at the customer port. So our delivered customer port cost in Rotterdam, which is one of the most expensive ports, is roughly $600 a ton. Uh, so this is uh, one of the lowest prices out there so far as operating costs are concerned. So basically what end users really want, because there's different stages within production so far as industrial minerals are concerned, there's usually the producer, uh, then you will have a trader that actually purchases the product and then sells it off to an end user, whether that be a lithium ion battery producer, an expanded graphite producer, a refractory producer, uh, there's a, a stepwise progression. So what we had done quite early in the process is we had met with all of the traders as well as almost all of the end users as well to find out what the requirements are. Uh, because graphite is quite an opaque market, it's very difficult for investors and really producers uh, to ascertain exactly what the triggers are that people are looking for. And so when you're actually talking to the producers, you find out it's not just the flake size and it's not just the purity they look for. They look for things like expansion coefficient, they look for reverse capacity. There's a number of technical criteria that you have to meet. Uh, so throughout the whole process, what we had done is we had produced a 200 ton bulk sample about four years ago. Out of that, we produced 13 tons of graphite that we had sent out to all these various producers for testing. The whole testing procedure started off with a few grams and then a few kilograms, tens of kilograms, hundreds of kilograms, and we sent out samples as large as one and a half tons uh, to prospective off-takers. So it's an arduous testing procedure. We've basically met all of the criteria all the way through, and the next stage now is actually more volumetrically significant samples or, and or production, basically getting our product in the hands of people as quickly as we possibly can. There's different types of off-takers, so they, uh, there's the, uh, let's call them the trader off-takers that want to get you a raw flake graphite concentrate, and there's also the end users. They often want a value-added product or else they'll do the value-added portion themselves. Uh, one of the other aspects that we wanted to do with this modular type of approach as well is we want to circumvent uh, the process, so to speak, so we could retain a lot of control for the value-added processing. Uh, the largest delta in pricing is actually in the value-added portion, uh, so we don't necessarily want to sell raw material to people, and that's why we're we're looking at the value added portion at the end of our uh, process as well.